In September, a woman and her great-grandson were attacked by two dogs in Golden. A few days later, 89-year-old Mary Gearing died from her injuries. Kayla Mooney, her granddaughter, and the mother of the 12-year-old boy who was attacked in this case, along with her boyfriend, Victor Bentley, face charges of unlawful ownership of dangerous dogs. Mooney and Bentley are both facing four charges. And joining us now to talk about the charges and this case is our legal expert, Whitney Trailer. And it's just the, the from the get-go, we've all said this is just so awful, the whole story. But to know that these are people that know each other, so often when we hear about these things, mm -hmm. it's like a stranger situation. Yes. This is family members, and now what are the penalties these people could Right, face? and I think that just amplifies the damage because the dogs were owned by the, the, the mother of the 12 year old and it was her grandmother so the 12 year old's great grandmother who was actually the one who was who was killed and so here under the ownership of a dangerous dog they could be faced with up to a hundred thousand dollars in fines and um, the woman could be facing six years in in prison and then of course restitution which is complicated because they're related do you have to know that your dog is dangerous to consider th these charges? Right, that's a great question. And so in a civil case, right, in a, this is a tort and it comes down to foreseeability. And so that's relevant because if your dog's never attacked, it's not foreseeable that they're going to attack. But under the statute, depending on um, the circumstances, yes, you can still be liable even if it's the first time. And the real issue is if you're the owner. And so they define a dangerous dog as someone who's attacked another animal, a person, whatever, even if it's the first time. So these dogs were deemed dangerous. The very first time, and they were euthanized. We, we, I don't know if we mentioned that, but when you talk about that, this the, often we think of civil cases. Yes. Because usually this is a situation where maybe two people didn't know each other, and immediately a civil case is filed. Mm -hmm. um, how would that work, though, in a case like this? That's a really interesting question, and I could still see a civil case because you have to remember. When there's insurance companies involved and there's a civil lawsuit, many times it's actually the insurance company defending, paying for it, calling the shots, even though a particular person might be sitting at the defense table, if you will. So here you have family members, a great-grandmother and the granddaughter and then a great-grandson and the father who is, I believe, in another state. And he, they call so you have it. extended he, family. He didn't yeah. have a comment. And so that's going to be complex, but I could see them still going after it because the homeowner's insurance policy will likely be uh, in play. And so they may, even though they may be suing family members, it may ultimately be the insurance company because the boy also has extensive in, um, injuries. Mm. I'm sure it happens all the time in your line of work as an attorney, but this strikes me as one of those cases cases where from now through ultimate decisions that are made, there will be no winners. The, no. This is just a horrible case that, that everyone comes out yeah. worse for it. No, this was a horrible case, and I had the misfortune of actually reading the arrest affidavit and what the police uh, stated, and as I was mentioning to you earlier, I have to go out of my way to give uh, props to the police, because police are in disfavor now, people are easily criticizing them, but in this situation, it was completely dangerous. They came into this gruesome situation. She had been mauled, her, her face, I won't go into the details, but I mean, there was, uh, it, it was just very bad. It was chaotic, bad. I'm it, sure. And that's Golden they, Police? That's the Golden Police. And the first two officers that got there, they were, the, the, the dogs were surrounding them. They had to call for backup. And so between the five officers, they were able to get her out and at least let her live for a few more days. And yet this also brings back ideas of people talking about pit bull bans and owners of pit bulls are saying no. Yes. No, no, no. It's not the dog's fault, it's always owner's fault. But there's always, I guess, circumstances and then somebody in government sometimes says, okay, yeah. let's revisit this. Well, and what really makes this questionable is what happened because they have statements from, from the boy and, and some neighbors, but folks didn't see what happened. And the boy's story, of course, he was traumatized. He had a broken broken fingers and, and his ankle was, was, was mauled. He saw what he saw. And of course yeah. he saw what he saw. And there was a question if one of the dogs was going to get the fight off the other dog because that is actually a defense if the dog was defending others but then they found human remains in both of the dog's stomachs so it also is uh, is a question so mm. um, horrible to this is yeah Tom I think you said it right there's there's no winners this is a tough situation all tough, around. tough case yeah
Well, thanks for bringing us up to date on it. Um, sorry, sorry for viewers and for us, we had to discuss yeah. it, but it is important, I think. Yeah, There's a is. lot at stake there. And uh, yeah. Whitney, we will visit with you again. For sure. Hopefully something a little less horrible to, yeah. to talk yeah. over, but we'll do it soon. For sure. Thank you as always. Mm -hmm.